Welcome to Saturday's Warrior as we celebrate BYU's first official in-conference Big 12 win over Cincinnati. It was a wild game to say the least. I am. It's uh, 2 a.m. here uh, for me. Stayed up late. Didn't get a nap today, so my thoughts are running all over the place. But I like to get in these reaction videos right away. Uh, I didn't get it last week after the Kansas game, and I want to make clear that it wasn't just because BYU lost. I planned on recording it anyway. Had family in town, family at my staying at my house, and it was just crazy. Couldn't get around to it, but. Tonight, I do want to go over some things. Uh, I'm looking over uh, my notes from the game. And, uh, you know, I really thought going into this game, okay, what are they going to do, you know, after last week having so much success with, like, I think 51 uh, pass uh, passes um, in the game to really open things up. And we know that Cincinnati, Cincinnati's um, run defense is really stout. And since our run game struggles, are we really just going to lean into it, go air raid, or are we going to see a lot of you know screen passes, things off to the side to to try to uh, replicate some of those um, rushing yards uh, through other means? And we didn't really see a lot of that. They opened up with really just trying to rush up the gut and having a little bit of success early on, and I thought that was a good sign. I thought that that was going to open up a little bit more in terms of passing. And we didn't see that really until that last second uh, drive at the end of the half where, uh, you know, they just went to town. I think it was three plays and went the whole uh, field and, and got that touchdown right before the end of the half. So um, that was interesting. And they, they really leaned on it to varying degrees of success. Yes, LJ Martin got that touchdown. Um, he had, you know, on uh, what was a, and maybe I'm mixing up two different drives, but what was looked like it was a third and long, obvious passing, and they, they handed it to him. And for once, it, the uh, the fake out worked, and, and he was able to pick up um, you know a lot of yards there. But for the most part, it didn't work. And not only were we getting dropped right away, we were often losing yards on that. So definitely, you know, we got ended up with 70, I think, rushing yards. Um, but uh, yeah, 70. So that... That is a good sign, I guess. You know, it, it's something. It's not a hundred, but um, you know, definitely need to to see a little bit more there still. But you got to really like what we see with the passing game. Once that, I don't know if something changed, if uh, if the looks changed, or they, you know, just the play calling. But once things really opened up, um, and and Keaton Slovis just uh, he was just slinging it and and. I really like that play, and uh, and I, I love him back there for us. So um, another thing, so the pick six, that was awesome. That was exactly what we needed. We needed, especially after last week, to see a little bit of momentum somewhere, especially with the offense. The, they hadn't been struggling yet at that point, at least not to a, a major degree, but over the course of that half, you know, seeing uh, the defense starting to wear down a little bit, but having that pick six in our back pocket was great and the the commentators were talking about yeah the player slipped but he had in those mesh routes he had signaled that he was going to be running to the flat that he saw space and that's where he'd be going then he slipped and then it ended up being an interception and that is something that uh, John Beck in his videos has covered a lot and, and shown in detail how a lot of these schemes work often from uh, generally from BYU's perspective on offense and and how that's supposed to work and and he's explained exactly that so if you haven't go check those out I, I love those videos he goes into so much detail and really uh, I'm seeing things out uh, watching the game now that I I didn't previously uh, see and it's still I uh, still learning but uh, check it go check it out the the why they do it um, videos on YouTube uh, let's see here uh, I might be jumping all over the place but man Ben Wy Bywater had himself a game uh, I really liked what we saw from Harrison Taggart and coming in and, and uh, replacing, um, oh, I said Ben Bywater, sorry, Thule had himself a game, Taggart replacing uh, Ben Bywater tonight. Uh, obviously, you don't want to see him out, but it's great to see a younger guy come in and get some meaningful minutes and, and do well, and uh, hopefully over the course of the bye week, we get Bywater and some of these other guys back. Uh, Marcus McKenzie on special teams again he does it 
And let's see. Oh, speaking of Thule, man, on that, the, the commentators were talking about, oh, you got to be careful hitting, you know, a quarterback even when it's close, which I agree. You don't want to, um, you know, leave that up to a judgment call to the refs. But, uh, yeah, he definitely let up. If Thule had been going full speed, uh, Emery was, you know, he would have eaten it. He would have gotten crushed. Um, so let's see. The commentator, I don't know what he's talking about. I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say the red zone at 25 yards out. It sounds like he was just uh, covering himself uh, when he, you know, <laughs> trying to, to make it sound like he knew what he was talking about. I don't know. that. I thought that was weird. Uh, let me know if, if you've ever heard anyone refer to the uh, red zone um, as 25 yards and closer. So let me know in the comments. I, I don't think so. Um, let's see. In the second half, the the early timeouts. You know, I have mixed feelings about this. Like, the timeouts are there to use. You don't want to end the game with, oh, you know, we, we needed them in these crucial moments. We didn't take advantage, and then we didn't have them. But if you get behind and you really need them at the end of the game, you know, it goes either way. And it makes me think of when I get my Halloween candy, I like to savor it. I like to, to make it last and hold on to it and not use it all at once. But then what happens, I have a lot of candy that's no longer any good or, you know, I just end up throwing away. So you, you want to make sure you don't waste any and you use them when you're supposed to. So it felt like they were, well, I think we called the timeout and then they got the first down after one of them anyway but you want to use those when you think you need them so i like that but on the other hand you want to make sure that you don't need them you know by being prepared getting out there and uh and then you still have them in your back pocket um what was going on with with the the quarterback draw we knew that emery was going to do that and yet he kept running up the gut and you know it looked like we'd have some guy you know, guys waiting for it and spying on, him, but they got blocked really well every time, and he would and he would break free, and it didn't seem like we were making adjustments to that. So if you saw something there on that, uh, let me know in the comments because uh, it just felt like we know it's coming. We know this is something they do and they rely on, and you know maybe I don't I don't know. It just uh, didn't feel like we were doing enough to slow that down. Um. You know the punt recovery. Obviously, that was that was huge, huge mistake by Cincy. Uh, another big, big, uh, crucial turnover for us, um, and and came at a great time, and we were able to capitalize on that. Um, you know, even if even if Cincy had recovered, you know, it would have been a missed opportunity, but it would have definitely set them far back. I mean, what that guy definitely. Uh, the returner should have just let that go over his head. It likely bounces uh, into the end zone, and you get at the uh, at the uh, twenty five. So let's see. Um, whereas uh, Nyberg, man, I'm he does not get us any extra yards. But on the other hand, at least he's catching the ball, and so you know you're not getting a turnover like that in those situations. So. I'll give him credit there, but I, you know, he does not give us any extra yards uh, on um, on punt returns. Let's see. Um, oh, and that that speaking of that turnover, it gave because our defense had been gassed, and even in the second half, you know, even when we scored, it was relatively quickly, and so our defense was out again on the field. And it had been, I believe it was a three and out right before that, that punt and then that turnover. And so, you know, our defense, I was like, oh man, we're gassed. I thought we were going to at least have the ball going into the next half. And so it did. It allowed us to have that possession at the beginning of the fourth. And then when we didn't get the touchdown, which it wasn't, and then we were able to punch it in, um, you know, that was good to just even more clock that we ate up, but even more importantly, I love that we showed that, you know, we we haven't been able to run all night, but we are going to force our way in and we're going to outman you. We just need to pick up half a yard, and they did it. I thought that was great. Instead of trying to go to the edges or whatever, which if you have to, you do it. But um, um, let's see here. All my other notes. 
Uh, you know, Martin jumped on the ball instead of picking it up. That was great, but I would have loved to have seen a little more aggression there at the end. You know, maybe on that third down, actually pass the play, try to pick up some extra yards and make an easier uh, third down or an, an easier uh, field goal uh, kick for Will Farron. So, I, you know, I understand the, the milking the clock, but you know what else helps is scoring points because even with all that clock milking, which is fantastic. It's something we, we you know, you wouldn't expect we'd be able to do well. Uh, we did really well with Tyler Algier. But anyway, that ended up, I mean, if you think about it, the onside kick, if we don't recover that, then since he has a shot to come back and tie the game, of course, they still have to do the two-point conversion. But it just got closer than you would have liked. I mean, we had trouble tackling guys in bounds. It was just like every single guy get out and go out of bounds, which I understand that the prevent defense and just make them run lots and lots of plays and run the clock off, but tackle somebody in bounds for heaven's sake. It got way too close. I would have, I know Satake, it's not his style to run up the score and just to, you know, at the end of the game, just let the game end, but you can't let them score like that at the end. Not that it, it matters, you know, in the grand scheme of things, but come on. Um, and then I, uh, speaking of Satake, I saw, um, there's a shot that was on him near the end of the game, and there's just a player that was right behind him. Looked like he was scratching himself a bit. Um, uh, the finally somebody stepped in front of him and and cut that off. But I don't know if anyone else saw that, but thought that was an unfortunate uh, angle uh, on him. So, um, the the first down that they called the first down, they ended up calling it back. It clearly was not a first down. I thought that was a great job by them. And really, we should have been able to end the the game at that point, and we couldn't, and that was frustrating. Uh, but anyway, what a great win! First Big Twelve win. We got to be excited about that. I'm super super happy. We're now three and zero over Cincinnati. It was one that felt like we really needed to win. We go into the bye week. Hopefully, we can get healthy. Got a tough match ahead to take on TCU. If for Cincy fans out there, you gotta you know yes, you got to be frustrated but also have a bye week. And then after this, you got Iowa State at home, Baylor at home, and then at Oklahoma State. And so those are three chances, you know, over the bye week, get healthy, get prepared. You got, you know, cakewalk right there. If you can take on those teams, that puts you in good position going forward. Yeah, you got some tough ones, UCF, Kansas, um, even West Virginia, it's there. I would you know, think it'd be tough, but you got at Houston. So still bowl eligibility is on the table, Cincy, but you got to take advantage of those easy games ahead of you. Um, same with Cougars. You know, we still got um, some very winnable games, but uh, a lot of uh, work to do ahead. And man, I don't know if we can keep it up winning, you know, and just banking on uh, turnovers uh, without really being able to get that run game going. But you got to feel good about what uh, Keaton Slovis and his receivers, especially Chase Roberts, uh, are doing and hope that we can see a lot more of that. And I'm just excited to go into uh, yeah conference weekend, but uh, into the bye week uh, with the win. It's a lot better to sit on that for a couple weeks now um, than with the bad taste in your mouth with, of, of a loss. So, all right, well, I've rambled on long enough. I need to go get some sleep. Go Cougs.